Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and for unboxings.com here looking at the Samsung Wave 2. This isn't the newest of Samsung phones, but uh, until now has actually just kind of passed us by. So we're going to do a little unboxing video for you, uh, see what's in the box, and then we'll do our full review. So the handset itself is presented immediately on top, so like so. And we're going to come back and look at that in just a second. We'll take a look at the other accessories in the box. And so on top we have warranty card, um, Samsung apps, and the user manual itself there. Also we have charger, which is a straightforward UK 3-pin plug with a micro USB connector on that end. And that's a fairly typical Samsung part. We then have a USB to micro USB sync and charge cable battery which is 1500 milliamp hours which is pretty high capacity and then finally we have a wired headset so it's a standard four pole three and a half mil jack length of cable and inline microphone with push button and then in-ear or in-ear canal style headphones. Again, I've used these before on other Samsung handsets and they are pretty good. They're among the best that you get as a wired headset. Um, although I suppose typically most people use their own. So look at the handset itself. On the front, a 3.7 inch display, 480 by 800 pixels. It is LCD rather than AMOLED. There is a forward facing camera for you know video conferencing and taking self-portrait pictures. Beside that, uh, difficult to make out with the uh, how dark it is on the actual screen, but there are a couple of sensors for ambient light and proximity. The speaker grill there, just at the top. Underneath, a couple of physical buttons, so uh, your phone keys on either side for answer and hang up, and then a menu button in the center. Swing around to the left, we have an up and down volume control, and not a great deal else. Nothing really to see on the bottom with the exception of a hole for the microphone. The right hand side has I believe a dedicated camera button and a lock unlock button. And on the top have a cover over the micro USB connector to keep things uh, tidy and keep the dust out. So that's behind there. We have the 3.5mm headphone jack which as I say allows us to use our own headphones or the supplied wired headset. There's a loudspeaker next to that. There's an eyelet here for connecting up a phone charm or a lanyard. And then on the back, we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. The back portion up from, well, from around the side and the back and the actual back cover itself of the battery compartment is uh, metal, sort of like this sort of brushed finish, which looks quite good, and glossy black on either end. So, panel there or button there that releases the back cover. And so that metal part comes off. Then we've got space here for SIM card going into the slot just underneath the cavity there. And then the bit there is for the micro SD card. Battery pops in like so. And then the back cover simply pops back on and clips into place like that. So let's just power up. And while I wait for that to come on, let me run down the rest of the spec. It's quite bad for GSM, dual band Rage SDPA, work in most places when you take it away. Dimensions 124mm from top to bottom, uh, nearly 60mm wide and uh, just under 12mm thick. Strangely, it feels quite thick having used um, a couple of really thin handsets over the last uh, week or so. It seems a little bit chunky. It really isn't, but it just in comparison to some of the others it is. Uh, it's 135 grams though, and it does feel quite heavy, and I think adding to that is the fact that it's metal and it feels a bit cool to the touch. It just seems a bit heavier, well it is heavier, but it just kind of feels a bit heavy in the hand. 135 grams isn't a great deal, and uh, if we go back not very far, then 135 grams would have been among the lightest, but um, it just does feel a little bit weighty. The front uh, display does have Gorilla Glass, so it is quite um, uh, resistant to scratching and damage, which is a good thing. And then we have built-in Wi-Fi support in 802.11b and G standards and also N, Wi-Fi hotspot mode as well. Bluetooth 3.0 with A2DP support, 
Um, also has GPS, assisted GPS, uh, digital compass and uh, TV out supported as well. Again, that's pretty good. And battery life is quoted at 600 hours standby and 13 hours talk time, which uh, sounds like an awful lot to me. Uh, one gigahertz processor, which is an ARM Cortex processor A8, and also a Power VR GPU. So graphically and uh, performance-wise, it should be pretty good. Uh, the operating system is Bada, Bada 1.2, um, which uh, I think is only on a couple of handsets. Um, so uh, we're not, I'm not particularly familiar with it. So we're going to take a look anyway. So I'm going to swipe the screen to unlock. And uh, on the home screen here, we have a series of widgets. So with the Samsung app, quick manual. Looks like we've got three pages. We've got a calendar on the next one and a blank page there. We then have a keypad, which is obviously the phone dialer at the bottom. So capacitive touch screen and uh, good, good clear color, actually. Bright colors and clear display. So that's pretty good. 3.7 inch and 480 by 800 pixels is, is rather good. So that's uh, that there. So we can go back uh, home. Got contacts. Groups and favourites, which uh, without synchronising anything isn't working, or is blank rather. Messages, text messaging, and so on, so we can compose messages. We see we have a QWERTY keyboard here, which uh, is kind of small. If I go yeah, there, sorry, a QWERTY keyboard there, which is kind of small because it's, uh, we lose a little bit at the bottom with these buttons, and then the QWERTY keyboard is there, and obviously the bit at the top, so it doesn't quite fill half of the page. Turn around this way. That is actually a lot better in terms of the amount of space that you have for the keys and the keyboard, uh, much larger. But uh, there we go, you get the idea of that. Back out of here. And back home, so this is the main menu. We have uh, logs, social hub, music, internet, email, a few other bits and pieces. Got another page of uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and navigation. So let's first of all go into the settings menu and connectivity, Wi-Fi and we'll connect to a Wi-Fi network and we'll enter the password there we go, we should be connecting and we are connected, so there we go it does show a little tick next to it and the signal strength there also at the top you've got an uh, icon so that we're connected over Wi-Fi and a little bar there that's showing the signal strength push the button in the middle Swipe down at the top, we can turn Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and silent mode on and off and there's no notifications in the drop down bar. That's uh, very similar to Android in the way that performs. Um, go on to the internet and we're going to go to our site. Keyword isn't bad, it's say it's quite, quite, quite small but um, seems to work quite well. So quickly the page is loading. So it's loading pretty rapidly, although not everything has loaded, which is kind of strange. Um, so some of the banners and advertising and the bits and pieces, other images haven't loaded on the page. Quite why that is, uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but everything else seems to be there. So there's a few things that haven't loaded there, which is a bit strange. So I'll just do a refresh and have another go at that. No, it's definitely not picking up some of that stuff, which is a little bit strange. However, everything else is loaded. Text is quite small, just about legible at that screen resolution. If we turn it around that way, obviously we have a bit more width to play with. We can use two fingers for zooming in and out or tapping as well. That's uh, pretty straightforward and that's kind of standard for a browser to perform in that way. We have this is going to my files so we can actually look through a file explorer or we have uh, email we have Samsung apps being better we don't have uh, we're insisting on a sim card despite me having a uh, Wi-Fi connection which is a bit of a pity we have a desktop search with the camera so 5 megapixels camera something bright and colorful that we can try out and take a picture of so Oh, the camera performs very fast anyway. It's very quick to focus and very quick to take the picture. So that that is impressive. Um, often you'll find that um, the camera's in these uh, 
smartphones can be a bit slow and you miss the opportunity to take the picture but as you can see that's taking them really rapidly so that's good we'll include the sample photos when we do the review um, down the side we can change settings so we can go video and camera mode we can record 720p video or 480 we have different scene selection modes as you can see there and we've got full settings menu so outdoor indoor resolution uh, other bits and pieces like GPS and so on so in geotag and down the side we've got AF modes exposure value flash etc so all the settings there that you would expect if we come back out of there and we've got what else we've got here we've got Facebook client got Twitter obviously they require us to sign in so I won't do that just now got the YouTube app which is basically just loading the mobile YouTube page through the browser rather than being a full-fledged app but we'll try that nonetheless let's search for me which uh, my YouTube alias being the OD let's see what it comes up with okay there we go so that's a number of my videos there including showing the status of the new ones so that's loaded there it hasn't started auto playing it requires a tap to make it work so let's see how quickly that is you'll notice up in the corner that the Wi-Fi icon flashes when it's transferring there we go didn't take terribly long to Hi, buffer. This is Matt from and obviously the auto rotate or the G sensor rotates the display accordingly. So that's your YouTube client. We've got a media browser. So that's going to preview the photos that we've already taken. As you can see there, it's actually using the G sensor as I'm rotating. And also I can just swipe through. As you can see there, that's actually using the tilt to move through. And if we go around this way and go full screen, or we can zoom in with two fingers and zoom back out again. So that's a fairly straightforward media browser. Uh, we've got a memo task navigation, we'll take a look at. Enable, enable location services. Enable advanced GPS, network position, and sense rating. Well, hey, whatever. So there we go. Won't download the maps just now, because that'll probably take a little while. So you can use two fingers for zooming in. Obviously, not your typical Google Maps. And we can do routes, plan routes, and create new routes. And we zoom to locations, drop pins, and so on. But we'll look at that again when we do the full review. We've got an FM radio, which I'm sure is going to insist yep, upon having the headphones connected in order to work, but uh, allows us to actually tune in to different FM radio stations. And finally, we have voice recorder, video player, games, and more. So let's just take a look at the games and more. We've got uh, Tumbling Dice, Brain Challenge, Edge, Texas Hold'em, Tetris, Guitar Hero, Brick Breaker, Crazy Penguin, and Pyramid Blocks. We can also download more. Uh, so we can go back and video player. I don't think we've got any. We've got no sample content. Got a voice recorder as well. That's pretty cool. So in terms of adding widgets uh, we've got other widgets that we can add here so this is a blank page we could add uh, wallpaper network info uh, birthday days email sync buddies most visited yahoo um, and you got, no. so we've got about 16 widgets that we can add presumably we could uh, find or download additional widgets because 16 isn't uh, particularly many so we just go to the network info it says no sim mode and let's add also um, AccuWeather 
just for the hell of it. And I've added another widget there which has pushed it over onto the fourth page so I now have four pages rather than just the three which is uh, quite cool and it's asking me to select city and everything else to actually get the weather. So that's fairly straightforward. So that is a very quick look at the Samsung Wave 2. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. Please do follow us and feel free to ask us any questions. We'd love to get your questions and your feedback and uh, we'll be happy to try and answer any questions you might have. And I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with Unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.